You might uproot the wheat along with them. This is a good reminder to those who are overzealous about getting rid of what they call bad elements in society. Even with the best of intentions, you know sometimes they end up doing more harm than good. You see, in this world, good intentions are not enough. Good discernment is more important, a more important tool in dealing with evil in this world. And so today's topic is about dealing with evil in this world. Why does the owner of the field in the parable not agree with the solution being proposed by the workers? Here is the reasoning. If you pull up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Like I told you a few days ago, evil is a trying hard copycat. The devil always appears like an angel in disguise. The weeds are very clever. They can make themselves look like the wheat. Some time ago, somebody was asking me about our mission stations. The mission stations that we have established in the slum communities in our diocese, which we call the church presence among the poorest of the poor. You know, the person was alarmed when he learned that some of the people that I assign as chaplains, some of them are here, by the way, sisters, that some of those assigned as mission chaplains in these mission stations are nuns, meaning women in consecrated life. And so the man reacted and said to me, Bishop, how do you ensure their safety? You mean to say you really assign them to live right there in the slums, surrounded by addicts and drug dealers and criminals? How do you protect them from the thugs in the street alleys in the slums? Well, I am sure the person meant well, but I realized that he had a caricature image of life in the slum communities as places infested with all the bad elements of society. I told him that even the matons, the thugs in the street alleys, greet our sisters good morning or even ask for their blessing make mano to the sisters when the sisters pass by. You know, when we see evil around us, we get overwhelmed. Like when we hear of criminals, scammers, akyat bahay, burglars, swindlers, rapists, abusers, or even killers, guns for hire, mga riding in tandem, who kill people like chickens. Like the workers of the field, sometimes we feel like asking God, Lord, we thought that everything you created was good, as it is written in the Bible. So where does all the evil come from? And the answer in our parable remains the same. This is the work of an enemy. The enemy is not your fellow human being. The enemy is the evil one. The one we are asked to renounce in our baptismal promises. Do you reject Satan? If we believe that this world and the people around us are essentially good, then it means we have to distinguish between the action and the person. 
Isn't that what you say as a parent when your child does something bad? It can happen that because you got angry with them, your child might think that you hate them. A good parent would sometimes find the need to explain kapag pinagalitan ang anak. No, my child, I hate only what you did. And that is what I am angry about. Not you. I don't hate you. I had to call your attention about it precisely because I love you and I care for you. You see, sometimes anger can also be an expression of love. Our basic principle as Christians is that all people are by nature good. When good people do bad things, it does not necessarily mean that they are bad people. That is why it is never good to refer to people as bad elements. No, they are not the enemy. We have to distinguish between the person and the action. One of the Psalms of the Bible expresses this very well. It says, If you, O Lord, would mark our sins, who can stand Psalm 130, verse 3. You see, the love and mercy of the Lord for the sinner is always greater than his hatred for the sins. I think this is the reason why Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, taught his disciples, do not judge so that you, shall, you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. The master, you know, did not allow the workers to play judge, even with the best of intentions, precisely because they could end up doing more harm to the good in their hatred for evil. You know that a society remains a humane society even in its will or desire to get rid of criminality if they still respect the human rights even of offenders. In the Diocese of Caloocan, you have heard me many times appealing for drug users even if what they're doing is bad even if we know the kind of crimes that some of them might be capable of doing. But we look at them as sick people who need to be rehabilitated. I know it's not easy, but we can do something for them. Just a few days ago, we had again the graduation of two batches of uh, our rehab patients in our Karot Salubong community-based drug rehab program in the diocese. We cannot judge their persons because we are not in their shoes. We do not know what kind of life they have had. Wala ka sa lugar nila. And sometimes, we have to put ourselves in other shoes as well. Think about it. If you were born in the position of that person, I wonder what it would be like for you. Yes, we can enforce the law, but still remain humane by treating the offenders not as people who are evil, but as people who have committed something evil. The distinction saves us from the tendency to play God and, and to act as judge and executioner at the same time. Even judges do not judge persons. They only judge their actions. That is why in modern penology, 
there has been a shift to what they call restorative justice from punishment orientation. The moment we get used to classifying people themselves into good and bad elements, that's when we quickly turn into executioners. The battle between good and evil happens in all of us. Walang purong mabuti dito sa mundo, just as walang purong masama dito sa mundo. In short, we are not the seeds. That is why you have no right to condemn anyone to call him a bad weed. Masamang damo. Walang masamang damo. Mayroong natubuan ng masamang damo. We are not the seeds. We are the fields. We are all the fields. And in some fields, the good seeds can be overpowered by the weeds. One of my inspirations for this thought is the novel Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, which is now better known as a theater musical. It is about an ex-convict whose name was Jean Valjean, who is reformed because of a little act of kindness done to him by a clergyman. In the background of the story, there is a cruel law enforcer by the name of Javert. And he makes it difficult for the ex-convict to live a normal life again in society when he is already under parole because he does not believe that a criminal can be reformed. The story revolves around the peasant, Jean Valjean, who had been released from 19 years of imprisonment, five for stealing bread for his starving sister and her family, and an additional 14 years for several attempts to escape prison. He is turned away by the innkeepers because his identity card marks him as an ex-convict. And so he ends up sleeping on the street, angry and bitter at the world. One day, a kind-hearted pastor takes pity on him, gives him shelter and warm food for the night. But Jean Valjean is tempted to steal the silverware of the pastor because he thought, yes, he welcomed me only now, but tomorrow he will throw me away again. I might as well help myself. So he helped himself and stole the silverware. He is caught by the policemen, and the policemen make fun of him because he told the fantastic story that the silverware that he was bringing was a gift to him from the pastor. And so he was brought to the door of the pastor. And to his great surprise, the pastor said to the policeman, Yes, sir. I gave those to him. They were a gift. And so the policemen, scratching their heads, were embarrassed. They had to go and to leave him. Let me end by quoting some lines from the dialogue of the pastor and Jean Valjean, the ex-convict, after the police release him. And the song says, but remember this, my brother. See in this some higher plan. You must use this precious silver to become an honest man. And the last verse is even more beautiful. He says, By the witness of the martyrs, by the passion and the blood, God has raised you out of 
darkness, I have saved your soul for God. 